And President Trump also made an announcement about ISIS prisoners that had been held in this conflict region in Syria. The president tweeted, I have just been notified that some European nations are now willing for the first time to take the ISIS fighters that came from their nations. This is good news, but should have been done after we captured them. Anyway, big progress being made. All right, we're now joined by retired Marine Gunnery Sergeant Jesse Jane Duff joining us from Washington, D.C. She's also a senior fellow at the London Center for Policy Research and a member of the Women for Trump Advisory Board. Here in studio with me, international security analyst Martin Himmel. Thank you both for joining us tonight. Jesse, I'd like to start off with you. Do you agree with the president's assessment that the ceasefire is going very well so far? Well, so far, I mean, we haven't seen more than 24 hours yet. I, we got to be optimistic that there was an attempt by the United States to mitigate the conflict. And so far, considering that Secretary Pompeo and Vice President Prince went over and worked with Erdogan, that shows great measure by the United States to ensure that we are remaining vigilant without putting our troops into harm's way. So we have to see how this turns out in the next five days. Will the Kurds be out of harm's way? Will they move? Will they ensure that they're not where Erdogan wants that 20-mile territory. Uh, he has 2 million refugees that he says he's going to get back into Syria, and I think he's very serious about doing that. All right, Jesse, many are seeing this as the ultimate betrayal for the Kurds, that uh, they effectively have negotiated their surrender. Now, I hear your point. I understand wanting to bring U.S. troops home, but there is also the concern that this will only embolden U.S. enemies and weaken alliances, not just with the Kurds. And some of the president's biggest supporters are saying that this is a strategic mistake, that this is similar to the Obama administration's reckless withdrawal from Iraq, which in fact facilitated the rise of Islamic State in the first place. Are you concerned about that at all? So the difference between Iraq and Syria, we were authorized to be in Iraq. We were in a combat role in Iraq. Our forces were sent over there to conduct combat operations. We know this. To say we betrayed the Kurds when we went over there in an advisory role and we made no determination that we would be there indefinitely. We had a thousand men. That's it. We had 50 on the border that had to be moved. How everyone keeps blaming the United States for this clash is really hard for me to get my head around because we were never authorized by Congress to be there in a combatant role. Everyone knows this. And to throw this guilt upon the United States when we have gone over and made the negotiations with Erdogan to do a ceasefire, I think is more than enough. Would it have been better than for Congress to authorize those troops in a combat role? Would that have been a better way to handle this? They've had many years to do that. Why didn't they do that under President Obama? President Obama said over 60 times that those troops were not in a combatant role. We didn't hear any problems from the rest <laughs> of the world. You know and I know that this president has not been, um, the, he doesn't have a large number of fans who are often on either the left or even midstream. And regardless of what he measures he did, if he had sent massive troops in, I think there would have been some aghast by the American people also. All His right. campaign promise was to withdraw our troops. All right, uh, that's a fair point, Jesse. Uh, Martin, as Jesse says, look, the president's critics are going to criticize him no matter what he does. But some of his staunchest supporters, like Senator Lindsey Graham, have been very critical of this particular move. Do you think this was the right move in terms of protecting U.S. interests in the long run? It's the biggest disaster ever he did. Uh, Republicans will not easily, uh, Republicans will not easily blame the uh, uh, president of the United States. They stick with him for many things, but this crossed the line. These 1,000 soldiers were probably the most effective, uh, effectively used 1,000 American soldiers in the last 20 years. They kept the Syrian military at bay. They kept the Russians isolated. They strengthened a democratic process among the Kurds. They kept the Turks across the border. They helped defeat ISIS. 1,000 soldiers. And when the Russians tried to test them a few years ago with the back of American air power, 240 40 Russians were killed uh, not long ago. And so these forces were not uh, sustaining casualties. They were not hitting guerrilla attacks. They were fostering a moderate force in eastern Syria. They're keeping the Iranian army at bay. And why not take them out and bring the whole area to disarray? What we have now is Turkey invading the area. Many of these Sunni forces are allied with al-Nusra and al-Qaeda coming in there. The Russians are coming in, and they have their hegemony designs with the Syrian government. The Iranians see this as a golden opportunity to get back into Syria and strike Israel. So it's a big disaster. The Republicans know it, and that is why they're turning against their president. And Jesse, you disagree with that assessment. 
Yes, yeah, so let's just uh, take a step back. So a thousand men accomplished all of that. That is not true. We know that's not true. Erdogan had made it very clear months ago. We talked about it on this program that he was going to send his forces in. We had discussions about the safe zones. We've talked about this. We've known. This has been no surprise. And President Trump made a, made a decision that he was not going to put those troops into harm's way. Everyone advocating for these thousand men to suddenly become warriors on the ground in Syria when there's no national security interest outside of ISIS. Turkey is a NATO ally. We know darn well there's not one Republican that can explain to me why we would want to be in firing range within Turkish forces. What about those Russians? What about those Syrians? Why would we want to be in a ground combat situation in Syria? Please explain to me what exactly is the national security risk? Because if it's such a national security risk, those over 300 congressional members should have voted that we could go to war for that national security risk. If it's just ISIS, we've talked right. about this also in the program, that there's thousands of military members members that are over in Iraq okay. who can do a rapid response to ISIS. All right, Martin, I'm going to give you a chance to respond to that after the break. Please stick around. It appears that the ceasefire between Turkish forces and Kurdish militias in northern Syria is mostly holding tonight. President Trump is also claiming that European nations have agreed to help fight any ISIS resurgence in the region. The president tweeting that EU countries will begin taking custody of ISIS fighters originally from Europe who are now fleeing the area. We're back with Jesse Jane Duff and Martin Himmel. And Martin, before we went to break, I promised you a chance to respond to Jesse's very well articulated argument that this, in fact, the withdrawal of troops from Syria is not detrimental to U.S. security interests in the long run. What's your response? Well, Jesse said that it's not that 1,000 soldiers cannot be the protector of the uh, Kurds or that region. It's not the 1,000 soldiers, Jesse. It's the whole credibility of the United States as a superpower, which has been totally dashed by Donald Trump. What has happened, basically, is that uh, the credibility of the U.S., the deterrence of the U.S., kept the Turks from going across. It wasn't the 40, 50 soldiers there. But if they shot at a, an American soldier or killed an American soldier, it would have been a massive line cross that would cause them big problems. That is why they didn't do it. It's not the 50 soldiers there or the 1,000. And what has happened is, according to many Republicans and a prominent admiral who wrote a, 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 an op-ed in the New York Times today, is that Donald Trump has become the security threat of the United States. He's allied himself with Erdogan. He's allied himself with Putin. He's allied himself indirectly with Kim over the South Koreans. He's more sympathetic to, to Kim. He likes autocrats, well, and he's a, a danger. A, that, that's a bit of a stretch, Martin. I wouldn't say that the president has aligned himself with these autocrats. Uh, but, Jesse, there is some concern, of course, about the resurgence of ISIS. And really what happens with regards to Turkey after this five-day ceasefire, because this has been a very big strategic win for Erdogan. How do you expect this end of the ceasefire playing out? First, I want to address the credibility with the world. The president isn't concerned about that. He's concerned about the American voters that wanted this to end. He was voted into office for that. The rest of the world understands that the United States has sustained their wars for how long. We have been the ones that have died on their shores. When they start coming to assist us, we can ta have a discussion on that, but the rest of the world has to be held accountable, too. We should not be the crutch for everybody who has right, these so difficulties so, as far Jesse, as with Erdogan you're goes. I advocating for, for an isolationist policy, a bigger isolationist policy. I didn't say an isolationist policy. That is not well, true because we're in be Iraq, the police we're in Saudi Arabia, we are be we the are police being, force no. of the world. But in in Syria, no, in Syria, and you're saying that our entire credibility is going to be shot because of Syria? That has nothing to do with our national security. Again, how is Syria basing, how is our Perhaps national security based upon what's going on in Syria when we never... The concern is that it, the chaos would now create a breeding ground for the resurgence of ISIS and that those attacks may happen on U.S. interests maybe even on that U.S. Has, soil. That has already been on our shoulders. That has already been on our shoulders. We have gone back into Iraq, and we have forces still in Iraq because of that very concern. But we do not have an agreement with Erdogan to be in his country in the first place. Erdogan already can't stand ISIS. We know that. That is Sunni. He already should be taking control of the ISIS situation. We stepped in to advise, to assist with that. That's why he never protested us being in there. But there was no agreement. To throw in our face that the world is disgusted in us, I'm sorry, we got monuments in the city that show how many lives have been lost. It sounds to me like you just are so disgusted with President Trump that you don't want any negotiations being made. He has aligned himself with Erdogan because it's a NATO ally. We understand what NATO allies mean. We're not going to go to combat with a NATO ally. You can't advocate for that. You can't have those thousand men firing upon a NATO ally, Russians and Syrians, with no purpose. 
Give, if the only purpose is to restore the confidence in the rest of the world, that's not an honest purpose for those that have volunteered to serve this country and defend the Constitution of the United States. Martin? Well, there was no need to fire on the, the Turks. There was no need to fire on the Russians. No need to fire on anybody. Americans How do you know were that? because You're Americans were because Jesse, Americans haven't been killed. I'm not being speculating. There's statistics. Of Americans course, have not we've been moved killed. Them out. No, no, John, because we kept them, them there. If they were staying no, there, no, there would be no more. Now, John. if you come in there, we there's going to be out, blood John. and there's going to be confrontation. Yes, it's Martin. Just to be Martin. clear. And that it's is Martin. how Jesse, give Martin against our national security. It's not against our national security. It's keeping stability there. It's keeping ISIS contained. Now you'll have ISIS in Europe and you'll have them in the United States. And American lives will be... Will be and the Europeans can step up. Yeah, well, the Americans have then to step up too because they'll step be up here to in work as well. The Europeans let's, need to step up. We have we stepped up against from, ISIS. From the Europeans, Jesse, because the president is saying that the Europeans have now agreed to take in ISIS prisoners. Do you see that coming to fruition? Do you see that playing out? What happens to these ISIS prisoners? I should hope so, because the fact is, is that the United States cannot continually bear the burden of ISIS when the, many of those are European fighters. The Europeans have to be accountable for the citizens that they have had they go have over to their now but in prison. But will they be? Agreed. They have to be. But That's so far a good they've question. shirked that responsibility. That's so will they question. be? So the problem is, is that the United States has become the default button for everybody else's burdens. And I appreciate that the United States has stepped up. We all have. We all have sacrificed for how many years now? We're in a 19 year, going on 19 years now in Afghanistan. We've been in Iraq. How many forces do we have to have over there to resolve ISIS? We have them in Iraq that can do an immediate response. The president has made that very clear that if they should resurge, we still can go back. To sit there and say American forces have not died is because he evacuated them. He made sure that they were not put in harm's way. You're speculating as to what would or would not happen. But Syrian forces, Russian forces, Iranian forces, and Turkish forces fighting again does not justify one U.S. soldier or Marine dying on their soil. Jesse, we appreciate your perspective, your passion, and as always, your service. Jesse Jane Duff, thank you so much. Martin Himmel, thank you so much as well for your analysis.